Relatively recently, I've talked about this really cool discovery of what seems to be an unusual formation that might have been created by a black hole escaping another galaxy. A formation that you see right here. And this back then was a pretty big discovery and ended up creating a lot of buzz in the scientific community. These were always predicted, never seen. But we might have been wrong about what this actually was. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And let's possibly correct the mistake and let's talk about what this probably is. Because despite the fact that it can still be an escaping black hole, leaving behind a trail of stars, and obviously because it sounds really cool, everyone in the scientific community would like to believe that, the reality might be much simpler, but also much more interesting. And might teach you something in the process as well. So let's discuss the original discovery, which by the way only happened a few months ago, and talk about the most likely explanation for what this actually is. But first, the discovery. So this was accidentally found using the Hubble telescope, and nobody expected to see this in the image because they were looking at something entirely different. But after it was observed originally, the scientists started to speculate that maybe this is a result of what we always believed happens. Basically a result of a galactic collision where two galaxies start colliding and a third comes in and possibly kicks out a central black hole from one of these galaxies. And because the Hubble telescope in this case were not actually looking for this but found it accidentally, nobody doubted that it was possible. With the stars visible in this case being a result of what's known as a shock-based star formation, which results from a really massive object suddenly moving really fast through dense regions of gas, which ends up causing shocks, producing dense regions where stars can form. You can learn more details and more explanations in that previous video in the description below. And quite a lot of scientists talked about this. Actually, there's even a video from, I think, a couple of weeks ago by Neil deGrasse Tyson where he goes through some of the explanations. But what you're probably not going to find is a video of him now explaining that it was probably incorrect. And so I'm going to do that. And so here's that new explanation. With the explanation in this case starting from the fact that everything here just kind of seemed a little bit too perfect. For example, in this case, it was some kind of a supermassive black hole, possibly approximately 20 million solar masses in mass, and it was leaving behind a really long tail of stars that's about 200,000 light years long. That's literally double the length of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The stars also appear to be just a little bit too perfect, with the formation being a little bit too straight. And because of this, some other explanations involved a different phenomenon. For example, some scientists believe that maybe this is from a galactic jet or a central black hole jet that fired into a certain location out there, resulting in similar shock waves that then formed the stars. Because it was so perfect and so long, this also kind of made sense. And then there was this other feature that is still actually kind of unexplained, that was visible as an unusual bright knot of ionized oxygen right at the tip of the formation. And some scientists thought that this is the sign of some of the gas hitting the black hole and producing the radiation from the accretion disk that's ionizing this oxygen, creating unusual emissions. Made sense, but in this case, because it would be a black hole absorbing a lot of mass, technically we should be seeing other emissions as well. Black holes usually do not produce only ionized oxygen. And assuming this was correct, of course, the scientists believe this might have happened 50 million years ago, with a black hole moving away from those galaxies ever since. But once again, just a little bit too perfect. Something here did not add up. And really, it's the size that didn't add up. It was just way too big. Even bigger than anything anyone ever predicted. And that's until the scientists looked around for more similar examples, and they actually found quite a few that provide a much, much better explanation that's also, I guess, to some extent, a bit boring. This is not a black hole and not a jet. This is just an extremely flat, thin galaxy, seen directly from the side. Or basically, if this is the Milky Way here, looking at it from this kind of a perspective, but because it's an extremely thin galaxy and does not seem to possess a bulge, it might resemble a line. And in this case, this line would be the length of the Milky Way. The line the scientists detected was twice the length, or typical of similar galaxies. Okay, might sound a little bit too far-fetched, I guess, but the thing is, we have found similar galaxies out there. And here's just one of the examples. Here's another object known as IC5249 that kind of resembles this as well. And these galaxies even contain their own classification within barred spiral galaxies. Here's another slightly more clear image of what it kind of resembles. And as you can see, it has a little bit of a bar. And so in this case, it's a barred galaxy that does not contain a bulge, resembling an almost perfect line. And if you were to look at it from the top, it might resemble something like this. 
so your typical spiral galaxy, but just super flat. But just morphology by itself, or I guess just the appearance by itself, is not enough. The scientists here went a little bit further. They looked at the motion of the stars on the inside, the overall size, the apparent mass of stars, and most importantly, looked at the overall apparent velocity of each of these stars in the formation, naturally using redshift and blueshift. And as you can see from the graphs here, it seems to match directly to the galaxy I showed you previously, IC5249. In other words, the velocities in this case seem to be almost exactly the same as the velocities in this other galaxy. Or to rephrase this, the stars within the formation were moving at pretty much the same velocities as what you'd expect from a typical spiral galaxy. Some stars were moving away, some stars were moving toward us, as if this object was basically spinning. And even comparing the relation between mass and the maximum velocity of these stars appeared to produce the same result. This was basically a galaxy. And not just any galaxy, a large galaxy, a pretty massive one. But just really far away from planet Earth, so it's difficult to see the details. This is basically like several billion light years away from us, so it's obviously not that easy to see this. But more importantly, this is not even a rare type of galaxies. These are known as super thin galaxies, and quite a few have been discovered quite close to us. And so just statistically speaking, it's unlikely to be something really strange, such as a black hole escaping from a galaxy, because it's a much more exotic scenario, requiring too many things to align perfectly. Yet with Occam's razor, the most simple explanation being the best, these galaxies are everywhere, and we've seen them many times. And they do appear as very straight, perfect lines, usually at least a few thousand light years across. And so since jets and black holes in this case would be a much more exotic explanation, requiring way too much evidence, and possibly a lot more observations from additional telescopes, it's unlikely to be the explanation for this unusual structure detected only a few months ago. And so even though we would like to believe that this is a black hole, all of the evidence here points at just a regular galaxy. A very thin galaxy, without a bulge, but a galaxy nonetheless. Which I guess raises the next question, how do galaxies form without a bulge? But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos, mostly because it's a completely different story for a completely different day. For now, I'm actually pretty happy with this explanation, even though everyone would love to find a black hole one day, just traveling through interstellar space, doing all kinds of really intriguing stuff. It's just probably not this. Anyway, as always, you can find the original paper and the new paper in the description below. And on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.